Hello, hi, my fellow surfers. I'm your girl, Kristen Tisley Fettelberg. Hello, my subbies. Hey, 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 guys. Um, yo, today is just one of those days where you just feel like I really need to tune my soul with God, hey? I need to get back and today I decided to do a video all about faith you know I, I know that most of us the past few years we have lost faith in God we have lost faith in life in general and I feel like I should just make a video as I also relate to losing faith at some point in my life and pointing out certain scriptures that will help us get back into that so before we get into it please for those who are returning thank you and those for new thank you also for clicking on this video here if you are new or you're old please remember to subscribe like and comment to this video and if you feel that there are scriptures or there's some things i left out about faith please comment down below make sure that everybody is aware and they have more information about the lord and savior whether you're a christian or, or whether you're not or you're just a human being who just believes in god but doesn't believe in religion there's some things that religiously wise or whatever is spoken does relate to you although you don't need the bible but you believe in god and you do pray so i just put in your comment stages for us as we're all children of god whether you call them allah or you call him god or jehovah or emmanuel we are all god's children and we are all right to have our own views on how we feel that god communicates to us and how god expresses his love to us so this is my way of showing that how i feel like god has expressed his communication to me and what what topic he decided that this should be the topic that you should be talking to your people today so for those who are wondering why i wear a duck um in my uh, church that i go to we do not communicate or talk about god without covering your head right so even if you even your shoulders this is not acceptable but so we have to cover yourself when you speak about the lord so i will um start as best as i can to make sure that i do not hurt anyone or offend anyone because some, sometimes a religious topic does hurt people in a certain way and we all feel like the bible has one word or has one phrase or one paragraph but it speaks differently to everyone everybody um feel or understands a certain chapter or verse differently and I, that's how i be like you know let me not be strictly say i know man i'm biased and all that we all need to be understanding that god made us different and therefore understanding will be different and therefore what we will become whatever is told or read to you you will understand differently you can be a collectively understand one thing because maybe we go to the same church or we are in the same religion or we're in the same belief therefore certain things will be expressed at a similar rate but for others who are not who understand it different so for today i will start with the most um common thing that happens amongst christians is lack of faith or have faith or people who actually want to gain their faith or want to strengthen their faith so they they end on phases where they don't know how to start how they want to grow their faith how they 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 they, they basically just lost they want to be close to god they want to have that faith that people talk about every day but they don't so i'm going to start with the verse for today before we continue on matthew it's, is that chapter 6 verse 33 it says but seek first the kingdom of god and its righteousness and all things shall be added to you. So that's and the first for today. For my understanding, it means that 
we all need to know where God is. What is God? Who is God? And the best way to know God is to pray. You know, the best way to know who is God and what he expects from you is to pray. When you kneel down or you just sit down or you just there and you just God or whoever you know God in your language and be like, God, I hear a lot of people say things about you, how I should pray, how I should do this. But I just want to talk to you. I just want you to show me who you are and I believe through that I will know how to talk to you from there on. You know, because there's people who are different. We can't say the standard way to pray because there are people who pray differently and the answers are prayers or they feel more closer to God the way they pray. I can say I kneel down and I switch a candle on. Some people be like, they stand and they raise their hands. There are those who just sit down and they just, just call God and there he is. So praying is differently. But the best way I feel or I understand that the minute you just sit down and you just or you just stay and you just call him. You say the almighty, the creator, the Jehovah, the land of the, the God of all lands. You just say God. Jehovah, Morena, Allah, and you just call, I promise you, he will answer you. God said that when you ask for bread, he won't give you a stone. So if you call him, he will show you how he wants you to praise him. There's no standard way of how you should pray to God. But if you're in a particular church and religion and you feel like this place is the place where I want to be, I want to be the place where I celebrate God, I want to praise God, then you should learn from them how they pray to God. That's what I'm saying, that if you just call God and say, God, I want to learn how to praise you, he will lead you to the church or the place or the temple or any other religious um group of people and you go there and you feel in tune with those people that's how you're going to learn how god is going to me like teach you how to praise him because he led you to that church or that temple that group or those particular people or that person you just met in the past and they're going to church and they, you see them and be like can i go to church with you that's how god wants you to learn how to praise him he led you to that person. So they're going to take you to their church and teach you how they pray. Then that's how you learn how to pray. That's how God is leading you to that destination. So with all that, let's start with all the seven um, or partially some of the um, eight scriptures about faith. So I have my happy thoughts diary where i scribble everything i write everything whatever i get from the bible or from ever so let's get into the scriptures of faith okay so we're gonna start with the first one and the first one is from matthews 21 it's actually chapter 21 verse 22 and it says this i'm reading it from the new version um, Bible. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. That's what I'm saying. That if you ask God for bread, He won't give you a stone. If you ask God to t to help you in the life that He is, He will not abandon you. But there's always that thing that people sometimes don't, don't understand. There's always a no. I have something better for you. And there's something like, wait, it's not yet the time. And then there is, yes, I will give it to you. So people don't understand. They'd be like, I prayed to God and he never, it's even five years I haven't received it. It's not yet the time. Oh, you prayed to God. 
and you said i want to work with and god be like no i got something better for you wait for me don't look on what you prayed for me for wait for me to answer you because sometimes you'll be like i want to get married i want to get married i want to get married she will get married but don't go every left right and set and waiting for tom dig and hear and be like tom looks like a nice guy i think he's the one that got answered for me you think that tom is not even yours he's not yours but you're praying for Tom to be your husband. You prayed for a husband. God will give you a husband. Don't self-appoint yourself, Thomas. And most of the time, we, we don't ask God that, God, I want a specific man or a specific wife, a specific job, a specific car. But you're not looking at yourself when you're asking for those people. Are you ready for that man that you're praying for? Are you ready for that wife that you're praying for? Are you ready for that job that you're praying for? Are you ready for that car that you're praying for? Did you ever think that when you were praying for that particular person, are you ready for that particular person? That's why when you see the first man or the first woman coming your way, you think he or she's the one. Because you haven't prayed to God that God i want to get married but i want you until i find you and understand you that new person that comes my way they have to find you first you find thomas got nothing to do with god he yo he doesn't even care he doesn't even care about being a part of god's circle not saying that people who party in groups don't don't want to pray but I'm just saying, just say a typical example. You want a man who is going on a specific path, specific characteristics. You want a woman with a specific characteristics. The next thing you see the most beautiful or the most gorgeous and handsome man. And they're just kind to you. All over the side, then your heart melts. Did you even look at the characteristics of that person? Did you even remember your prayer? you didn't you just ran to the first human being that came your way and you thought that god sent it he didn't even the devil listens to your prayers that's why you should ask god that when you bring this person please give me a particular sign a particular sign even god will show you you will feel when god sends you something there's a difference between how God sent you something and how the devil sent you something. Sometimes the devil will send you something and you'll be so all happy. But when God sent you something, you're going to cry. Or you, you're going to be... Hey, uh -uh. But when... Let's like with God, man. I feel like when God sends you something, you turn and be like, I don't want this one. But that's what you prayed for. But you'd be like, ah, I don't want this one. Well, God thinks are not like KFC or McDonald's, just like that. And you'd be like, yay. With God, it's like sandwich, you know. Peanut butter and jam sandwich. It's good for you. And it's going to boot you. It's going to make you healthier. But no. You want McDonald's, the fatty one. Because it looks good. God is giving you what is right for you, not what you want. He gives you what you need, not what you want. What you want, you make it yourself. But at, at that moment, he gives you what you need. You want a man who's going to build with you. You want a woman who's going to build with you. And the things that most people, for them to be in situations where they'd be like, yeah, God is not. It's because you listened to the devil instead of listening to God. You can feel in your soul and your heart that this person Especially when there's something sent by the devil, there's doubt. But yet you'd be like, ha. Ah. But when God sends you someone, you feel like, I feel like I've been connected with this person. I feel it. But, nyasaba. Because you have been traumatized by what you want instead of what you need. So, learn to know what you want and what you need. And also learn or ask God to show you or to teach you 
to know when it's him and when it's the devil so that you don't get confused between the two and think that God gave you a stone when he actually gave you bread and you decided to speak a, th a stone because you were too delusional to understand that he gave you the right thing and when you wanted what you wanted. Cool. Let's go to the second one. Then we're going, then we're going to look at the second one. I love the second one. It says, it's in Luke 1 verse 37 it oh. says there is nothing that god cannot do there's nothing that you ask god and you think that he can't fulfill it he can and he will at his own time at his own time there was this guy on tiktok he he tried to show us how you can never play god so he asked God, um, how long will it take a person to get a million dollars from me? And he said, just a minute. Then he said, how long will it, it, it will it get for a person to get a um, million, a billion dollars? He said, God said, just a minute. And it's like, God, can you just please borrow me a million dollars? And God said, a minute. And a minute to God is 100 years. To you, it's just, to him, it's just a day. To you, it's a million years. So don't try to play God, but he will. He will fulfill your goals. And... I mean, and like if you think about it God has always fulfilled our, our, his promises and I do believe that God does communicate to us the way he used to communicate to those in the Bible back then it's just that some of us we want to see him the way in the Bible basically says we want to see him and we know that Bible is not it's not completely like you know like the way you see a person it's most of the time it's like um a tree that is burning or there is a voice and i'm telling you guys if you think about it when you go on social media there's always going to be a post that talks to you that's god talking to you be like um you have a habit of drinking too much you go on facebook and you hear you hear that there's you will never solve your problems by drowning yourself. Or you find a TikTok video talking about a person who who stopped drinking and they, 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 they the life changed. I feel like God talks to us in many ways, but we just want to see him like life. There are times where I be like, God, I've been begging you for this thing, but it has never happened. Why is are you saying no? Is it a millisecond to say I'm gonna get it a million years? And then I'll be like, Well, if that is that then it is your will. Then I go on TikTok. Usually it's one of those platforms that has like for me a direct answer. I go on TikTok and then you find a priest talking about who are you to rush God? And who are you for you? To lose your faith at just one obstacle. Then they start quoting all the people who went with job or and also um and John. And then I'm like, why am I losing faith? He did confirm in a dream and say it will happen. Why now? I'm second questioning it because it's not coming as fast as the time I asked for it. Maybe it's been three years I've been praying for that thing and it hasn't come. But the other person said they started praying January and March. They got it. Your stuff and their stuff are not the same. Jenny's are not the same. This is why we as people tend to lose our faith because we are comparing. And forgetting that 
there's nothing that can stop God from doing what he told you that he would do for you. If he asked, if you asked him for, and he shows you, in a, whether it's through a meme or through a motivational speaker or through a conversation on radio or whether it is birds, some people use animals as a sign from God or whether it is a message on the phone or there's a, um, a small um, poster with a very motivational points or just somebody talking with a person and you hear that this is actually a sign from God saying that I will receive that. The next thing it passed through months and you haven't received it all of a sudden you are quiet. Why are you angry? He said he will do it. He never said he can't do it. He said he will do it. On the right time. Have faith. Uzulunga. Zoba grand. You're gonna be good. You will be cruising nicely. So but right, just be patient and have faith. Let's go to the third one. And this one, I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. It's something that I really feel like most of us as Christians, we tend to lose want it. it. We want to praise God, but we forget on how we should do it. So from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. It is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift, and no one can boost about it. It's Kilotaka, Kitaka. I made it. I worked hard for this. I spent 19 days to get this. It's me. No one helped me. Imagine you forgot the God that you have been praying for. The one that you have been kneeling down and praying for. The one that you've been going to church every day. He now makes your dream come true. It's my effort. It's my man. It's my stuff. Listen to Gogo Crystal. It's not yours. It's God. And he can take it back. Remember to to always say it is by God's grace that I have one, two, three. It is about God's will that I have achieved one, two, three. It is about my my God, the God that I pray to, the God of Almighty, the God of greatness, the God of grace, the God of love, the God of peace, the God of everything. The God of giftness, the God of life and the God of the life, the God of the living. That I am where I am today. That I'm alive today, today. And that there's nothing that my God cannot do. For everything I ask for, he will fulfill it for me. In a way that he sees fit. It's not your car. It's God's car. It's not your body. It's God's temple. It is not your house. It's God's house he built for you. It's not your food. It's God's food. If he wants to make a drought, you will suffer. It's not your rain. It's not your water. If God says, I'm not going to put any water in your legs, in your taps and everything. Also, Kala, you will cry. <laughs> I'm telling you, also, Kala. Huh? The Lord Almighty, the God, He doesn't wear a short pant. He doesn't play with you at, at tennis or at soccer. He is the reason why you still have everything that you have every day. Whether you have no legs or whether you have legs or whether you have eyes, you don't have eyes. Whether you have anything in your life, it is because of God's will and God's effort and God's... Yeah. You had faith. Now you have boosting problems. God doesn't need you to boost for his behalf. You just say... It's by God's grace that I'm still alive. It's about God's grace that I have what I have. It's about God's grace that I exist. You do. If a person, you see a person like, hey, this man, you be like, hey, 
this God was given me by God. Also, with God's things that He gave through me. This is God's gifts. You don't play like that. You do not. You do not boost and say this are my stuff. I work for it. Yeah, look at me. I got this stuff. And then when God takes them away from you, you wanna start crying. And telling God that hey, when now you gave me things and you take away, it's because you do, you cause you're boosty. That you got them, you. You told the group. Because if God said I don't want you, wouldn't have gotten them. So remember, in the first few words, it is by God's grace or God's love, it's God's will that He has answered my prayers. To fulfill this car, this house, this marriage, this kids, this body, this every limp that I have, this studies, this qualification, this business, this church, this bed, this table, this whatever that God has given you. It is God's will. Namanzi that come at your taps, the water that comes at your taps, it's God, not yours. Mudimu doesn't have time to play with you guys. Ushikwembu. It's not your friend. It's not your friend. He's your father. The Omega, the Alpha. We should remember that. We do not boost. But you need to... You know, there are people be like... I used to suffer and I didn't have and then now I have all these things. Remember, God has not given you all of these things. Don't forget to tell people that it's through God, not through your own efforts. Because there's people who work until they're old and they haven't received all those things. So if God said no, he said no. Maybe the grandchildren want to have it, not you. But you were so fortunate enough that God gave you all those things. So you must remember, it's about God's grace. And it's your faith that pleased God to give you all that. Sazwan, Raudwan, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you hearing me? Good. Don't forget to comment down there on what your experiences with God were through faith. You know, what what made you feel know that God is there? Ne? Comment down below. So now let's go to the fourth one. Another one is 2 Corinthians verse 7. For it's our life is a man not of sight. Um, there's a faith or uh, there's a phase said um in Sutu that says like meaning I believe once I've seen something. If I haven't seen it, I don't believe in it. You know, there are those people like that be like as long as I can't see God, then I don't believe in God. If I if I don't see what God has done for me, then I won't believe in God. You know? And then there was um this video on social media where a girl said something about oxygen and stuff like that and said that she don't believe in God because she can't see God. And a little kid said, Do you believe there's a thing called A? And she said, Yes. But you don't see air, but you believe there is air. I was like, kid is throwing, is throwing the Holy Spirit, holding the fire. And I thought, it was like, my boy, my boy. And the other thing, she was like, you can't see your brain, but you believe that your brain is. So there's so many things that they kid pointed out and I was like 
there are a lot of people who be like um there is science science proves that there's a you being alive is also a, a, a proof that you're alive scientists cannot create a human being only god can yes there's ivf but can they put the soul into that they if if can they start from scratch and build a human being maybe but can they put life in that human being but as much as science can prove whatever they can prove but i do know that god is there and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for god i know there's currently uh robots that are created that they're starting to have their own minds and all that but was that there in the beginning no and even now those machines are malfunctioning so with god we don't malfunction but that is a debate for another day but i genuinely believe that you not knowing or not, or not not even not knowing let's say you were passing down the road and then you feel a push from your back and then a car passes by and you don't see who pulled you and you're like was that god it was god or somebody does pull you that was god the humanity inside of it god came into that person and pulled you off the street say do there are some circumstances or some situations you ask yourself i don't know how i did it i don't know how i survived that i don't even know what just happened but i did that it's through faith that you could do that you believe that god will help you and you did it and you're like ah. How can I? It's through God and your faith. I know there's gonna be debate on this one, but guys, like, I don't know if it's it's if I'm not sure, but there was a movie about a girl who who was healing people, and that was a movie of a girl who believes in miracles. If I'm not sure, because God is there. There's one thing God is there. for those who are not religious, but they do believe that there is a creator. That creator, we call him God. Whatever's above and whatever built, creates and is there and helps us, we call him God, Allah, Jehovah, Moran, and all that. That's the names that we all give him, but creator is actually God. You know, whatever has created this, whatever has made all these things happen. It is God. You know what? And I know there's a lot of people that be like, I never believed in God. Do you believe in the universe? Yeah, the universe is God as well. God is the universe. God is all things. Whatever you believe in is helping you. It's God. Let's leave it at that. That's just a confusion that we are all giving ourselves with not accepting that there is something above us. No. and something that is all the the whole and the world in us and that huge thing that you believe that thing that is above all above it's the same thing as we christians say there's something above us something better than us something that created us both us we call him god I'm not sure if you get what I'm trying to say, God. Whatever you believe has created you is God. That's the term me. Like, when you describe to us, Hori, I believe in something bigger than us. To us, we say it's God because God is bigger than us. Do you understand? You're not fighting or enforcing our beliefs on you. They're just saying whatever you're describing to us, first in the same description, as the god that we serve the creator of the universe the the, the 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 god of the living the god that builds and creates the that the substance that builds people the substance that in the flowers and everything it's god because we believe that god is everything 
God is in us and God is in everything. So that's, you know, so you don't have to see the actual God, but you have faith that God is actually it. God is actually in you. God is actually in everything. And if you think about it, everywhere you pray, you ask yourself, I was praying in the streets full of people. How did God hear me? In those people as well. God is also in those people. God is also walking with you. God is always in wherever you are. And some people be like, I don't believe that God can be in everywhere and every place. There's a reason why God said, or he sent Jesus to say this. I mean, the Father and the Father is in me. God said in, uh, in the Bible, it says, God breathed this air in Adam. So that means God is in Adam, in every human being, in yourself as well. That's why there's always that conflict between you, the good and the bad is always fighting for you. But God gives you the liberty to choose between him and the devil. It's not that matter that God cannot defeat the devil. He can. But he just wants to give you the liberty of choosing. Do you want me, my child, or do you want this imposter? Choose me or the imposter. Then if you choose God, ah, you got clapper removes go forward you grow just choose inside of you who you want and listen carefully let's go to the other one which is number five so we are now on romans chapter 10 verse 11 and it goes by so then faith comes from hearing the message and the message comes from the preaching Preaching through comes through preaching Christ, which is something that the Lord Jesus Christ was doing. Everywhere he went, he was preaching the word of God. He was preaching, ensuring the miracles and the possibilities of God, and all the other people in the Bible were also preaching the word of God. And this is the thing that I feel right now. That God is using social media to try and it tries best to not throw anyone aside and be like I and be like I didn't send anyone to you he has I am also here and the other great thing is that even if you debate with me you know you're just fighting with yourself you know and therefore the bible the minute you argue with me you have to open the bible to prove a point to me and that's what that's what the lord almighty wants from you and that's when you defeat the devil you need to debate with me by finding it in the bible and proving it in the bible and you need to find scriptures in the bible to prove that i am wrong or I'm actually right. Or there's actually more scriptures. It's something that most people haven't realized. All these debates are causing you guys to open the Bible. And that's what you so And that's how God makes you. Makes you connect with it. Because you need to read the whole thing to make sense. You need to open this thing. It's there but you don't open it. But if I say something and you're like, hey, 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 hey. open it and prove a point. Open it. So that you, when you, I promise you, when you find something you want to prove to a person, somebody else, you eventually, you will come across a scripture or a verse that God wants you to read. Maybe there was something that you've been praying for, but you never got the answer right. Or you never understood it through other communication. This, this will open, will answer for you, and your faith will be restored. Preaching, talking. I think most people. I think with preaching, most of us don't really understand what preaching is. Sometimes, you know, sometimes preaching is like 
communication yeah when i'm communicating i'm talking about god i'm telling you that god nothing not god did this and there's this woman who read this i don't get her but i know that this verse says one two three you're preaching you don't need to be a preacher you don't need to be a pastor a pastor Maruti. you need to just know how to open this read it pray for understanding and ways to make people also be like she said something but i don't agree with crystal why don't you agree and oh, show me in the bible what you don't agree with like no you said something about Matthews what was that I'm like but that's how I understand it when I went how you it you said one two three and I feel like in the Bible it says one two three you open this for that I am pleased and God is pleased you are pleased and therefore when you say that you can also talk to the other people talk to other priests and everything the aim is for you to open this thing this thing has been written by many people who've experienced God. They need you to open this, open this, open this, open this book. It should not be there, not opened. There's so many stories you hear about people say the house burnt down, but the Bible did not burn. There's so many people who said their grandmother used to read the Bible, but when they passed away, they had no money. Only when they felt that why was Granny always reading the Bible when she was alive? They open the Bible, they find money in the Bible. So open your Bible. Your answers is in here. Is in here. Why did the Bible not burn in the house when the house was burning? Why did the tree burn but it was not burning? <laughs> open this thing. We will know. You'll know even who I'm talking about if you open this thing. You open this thing, you will know whose tree was burning. We're going to play a quiz at the end. And I want to make sure that you all know what I'm talking about. So now let's go to the, the few last ones. And then we will go into answering a few questions about faith. So I found the other one, which is Proverbs three um advise everybody to read the whole thing it's called advice to young men it doesn't mean men only but also women in general but i also advise that we all read it because it guides us especially the youth we, we you know need we to grow on that so on proverbs 3 verse 5 it says trust in the lord with all your heart never rely on what you think you know you know there was a i hope if i find it i will put it up here um there was a, a man who said the more you speak the less you learn but the more you're quiet the more you learn because every time you pay, 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 there's nothing going in. There's more coming out. But when you're quiet, there's more coming in. And you can start thinking and be like, mm, mm. If I'm around certain people with good knowledge and good experiences, people actually have logic and understanding of what you know. And the experiences that they have about life or they have about God, I will learn more. Other than just disagreeing. Sometimes, that's why this is, other guy says, I am no longer disagreeing with anybody. Whatever you're saying, it's right. Right? But I'm not saying just go with it. But like sometimes just think, you know, with God's understanding. Be like, God, I think I did not understand this person. Can you please help me understand what this person was saying? Because sometimes we listen to a person be like, ah. And you find that there was actually a message in what that person said, just that they didn't say it in a way that convinces you. Yeah, right? Well, so the the point of this thing is that in every day, in every thing we do, we learn something new. 
you must just say that I, I, I know the Bible, I read the Bible, um, I, I don't need to hear what other people say. This thing can be read in a month. Nah. But you cannot only understand it in a month. There's a reason why we go to church every Sunday. Or every Saturday. Or every Monday to Friday. Or every Monday to Sunday. Because the Bible is a basic instructions before you live in earth. Therefore, everything that you're doing every day, you need to come back to this. Because your life is not going to be on one situation, on one standstill. Every day you're going to encounter things. And it will guide you on that. What you know yesterday, what you know today, tomorrow will be different. What you knew yesterday, today is different. And what you will know in the future, later, will, in the future, future, it will be different. Therefore, this Bible will guide you in every every time and every path and every guidance and every timeline in your life. You will continue to know nothing. Every day you will have to go and meet new things and learn new things. Therefore, you should not be like, ah, I've been there, so this is it. Are you sure that you did the right thing the, the, the previous time? Are you sure? Times are different. We change. People change. What you, what you knew back then can be different today and tomorrow. Your aim right now is for you as an individual to know that i am not completely smart and i'm not the only smartest person in the room you know when you're only the smartest person in the room you will be stupid eventually you'll be stupid because all the people around you are learning from you but when you're not learning to learn more because you're not being with people who are above your knowledge above your experiences people have more thinking than you you're not just being the person who speaks who speaks with me and people are just absorbing 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 I, you need to be with people who are smarter than you people who have different experiences just because you're an expert or you have received your phd or you you're not a qualified priest doesn't mean that you're not every you know everything Expose yourself to people in your expertise or even above expertise or people outside. Just be around different people. Even if you're in a particular church, expose yourself to other religions. Not to say that you must be influenced by them, but expose yourself so that you can gain more knowledge and understand why God decided to make us all different instead of making us one. Why the world is the way it is. Why the next person is not behaving like the next person why this person has consumed the same thing but they're behaving differently do not rely on what you know but rely on what you should know because what you know can change tomorrow life is dynamic you know there's people when you go in the workplace they refuse to get more skills they refuse to go to school they refuse they refuse to upgrade their skills and guess what they stay in the same position they never grow they stay there and then they hate those who go and upgrade and get better skills and fight to engage with new people and, you know, network and engage with other people, right? Expose themselves to new surroundings and new knowledge. And then they don't grow. But those who do, they grow. So don't ever be like, hey, I'm a graduate, I'm done, or... I've been working here for 20 years, so I know what I know. No, what you know might not longer be relevant. Might be outdated. I mean, you cannot be in one position and think that whatever you're doing is going to be the same. Even doctors. Go and meet doctors in other countries or in other fields. Because they know there's new diseases that arrive every year. Look at COVID. Look at COVID. Even doctors learn new things about what people are doing to make sure that they are okay from exposing themselves to such things. Yeah, what? That's what it says. Now let's go to the other 
verses in the Bible. Then we'll be going to Hebrews. And Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse 6. If it and is impossible to faith, please him, whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Do you hear that? I will read it again. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards who seek him. So do you get my point? Do you get what the, the verse is saying? I think if I were to say it in simple terms, it says, if you don't have faith, how it's going to happen? It's like, I don't have faith that um, God won't do that for me. But you, you're just praying for like, it's one of those things like, I'm just praying because somebody told me to just pray. It ain't going to work. Or I'm praying because I want to see if it actually does work. As some situation, I've realized that God does kind of do it, just fella, to show you that um, He does exist. You know, just to show you that, you see, you prayed and I'm there. There is it. I, I just proved the point to you. But that will be the last time because that is part of testing God. You know, like, if I, it's, I, it's in, yeah, in the Bible, when the devil came to Jesus, and Jesus was fasting and he says, throw yourself if you're actually God's child. He has faith. But why test God? Why? And I feel like most of us as Christians or, or as non-believers, we do that. We tend to test God to see that he actually is there or he's actually for us. You know, because you want a particular thing, you know. Yeah, if 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 you it's like a truth or dare kind of game, which God doesn't play those games, and it's really disrespectful either, either way, to 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 just test the person so that you can get what you want. So you gotta believe that what I'm praying for, God will give it to me. I will not prejudice God. I will not fight God. Yes, I will pray about it every day to show God that I actually, actually, actually. And for it, I actually want to go to school. Please help me with going back to school. Please help me start a business. Please help me get a promotion. Please help me with looking after my family. Please help me with my marriage. Please help me with raising kids. Please help me with the friendship that I have with my neighbors, with my life, with my career, with my tender, with my project. But don't test God for he only tests us we do not test him because I feel that's how most people be like I will have faith if I see it if it actually happens for me shame yeah and the closer you are to God the easier it is for you to get the rewards that God is for you. And I'm not saying easy. And I'm like, hey, I believe in God. I pray to God. Then yeah, God is mine. And then you think you're going to get a Mercedes Benz when you get outside. No. He will put you to tests. Because only he can test you. You don't have to test God. He tests you. If I take everything from you, will you still praise me? If I still, will you, if I still, Take away your most precious thing when you still praise me. Like Abraham. Abraham cried for the child. Abraham cried for the child. And then guess what? God be like, take him and make him my sacrifice, your firstborn child. Yes, Zokala, but that's how he tests you. He won't take it away. He's just testing you. Are you still going to praise me? Are you still going to be my child? Are you still going to be with me? 
And then he realized so no matter what I take from this person, he will still stand for me. Then you know how. Therefore, he will reward you with even more. Look at job. Took everything. Double. Double. Double, 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 double. If I could speak about the things that I went through in my life, you'll understand why I'm this fat. I'm, I'm double the weight that I lost. <laughs> I'm the bigger. I was fat. Then I got skinny. And I'm fat again. Double the size. I'm pretty much a more than hundred. <laughs> That's how big it is. Well, let's go to the, the other part. <laughs> the other one. Hebrews. Hebrews. 11. Verse one. Now faith is assur is the assurance of things hoped for, and the conviction of things not seen. Do you understand? Faith is assurance of things hoped for, that the conviction is not seen. You hoped one day. You see, you know what I love the most is those old people from back in the days. They'll be like, I know God will do this for me. God will do. And then we're going to be like, ah, Coco, you're old. This thing will never happen. This thing will be like, and then like, it will happen. I know it will happen. It will happen. And people keep on discouraging you and it will happen. And then when God does it, everybody's be like, ah. And Coco, you said it will happen. Once people are discouraging you. And like you know like a woman who gave birth and then they, they they say the child passed away but deep in their heart they know the child is alive and then later on five years or ten years later the child comes back home and be like i told you my child was alive that is hope even when people tell you that hey yeah, it's not there it's there it's very much there it's there if your soul and your heart tells you it's there it's there if God keeps telling you it's there, it's there. Yes, there are people who are delusional who have their own stuff, but it's there. You will get it. There are those who actually are not in that field of delusional or something. But sometimes the delusion might be the reason why that thing will be there. Because delusion also derives from hope, you know. You're hoping for that thing and that thing ends up becoming all fuzzy and crazy stuff. But I, I do believe that most of us as people, hope derives from faith. When you have faith, you have hope. When you have hope, you have love. You have faith, you have hope. You have all of that. Okay. When you know that you, you know that you have faith that you will pass your matric. You will pass your teacher qualification. You will get that uh, promotion. You will go not doing through your thing, but working hard and being smart and upgrading yourselves and making sure that you do what is uh, required for you to grow. You will grow. Your faith will bring you to that phase where you're like, yes, yes. My hope and faith brought me to that. I am there. I am there. Because of God. I know God will do it for me. My church will grow. There's more people who are going to come to this church and fight deliverance through the preaching of Jesus Christ or the Lord or Jehovah or the Allah. There's more people who's going to come here with the prayer mats and they're going to come and pray. There's more people who are going to come here with the Lord's garments and they're going to pray with us in the sun. This is this heart. There are going to be people who are going to come there at the rivers and the, in the lakes and pray with us by the lakes. Because you have full hope and you have faith. And for that, God will reward you. So, well, uh, I think I have re I've read all the scriptures and the verbs of faith in the Bible. Now we're going to answer 
certain questions about faith and i hope you got your pens and you got your glasses everything that you need for the session because we're going to be answering about 10 um questions and i hope it will help you through faith deliverance and understanding of the word of the lord and jesus christ that thing you need to know like yeah yes i always wanted to understand this because i never understood it yes i hear i hear but i don't understand i see but i don't understand you know i can see but i'm not seeing i saw but i must you know you can okay, nearly said sorry <laughs> so, so i'm gonna look at that and then hopefully i, I might have captivated you got your answers right because i've written them down so for you we will try our best and get whatever we need and answer you the best way possible let's get into it so you're gonna start with the first question and the first question is how is faith described in the bibles of hebrew and this is basically i'm not i just specifically just took hebrew because we did read a few scriptures about hebrew so now we're just gonna find a detailed response to it right so i'm just gonna read it out for you probably just type it down for you there so you can get the whole full statement let me just shift so you can get the full testimony point about it how is faith described in the book of hebrews faith is described in the book of hebrews as assurance of things hoped for remember we said that and the conventions of things not seen it goes on to provide numerous examples you know we find that there is great faith in god says abraham is child moses building his ark and people did not believe in him and everything and eventually did win and you find with many other people like job like i said we find with jesus and we find with john and star we can go on and on and this people serve to illustrate the power and the importance of faith in the lives of those who believe in the lord jesus christ and it is also depicted as a bedrock strong relationship with god because faith is what keeps you with God. And when you have that, you have a deep relationship with God. No matter what happens, you know no man. At the end of the day, this will be for me and God. This is will be for me and the Lord. It's a relationship, the foundation of all things. And this is essential to pleasing him and receiving his promises. So do you understand? When you have deep faith with the Lord, you have a deep relationship with God. Obviously, you won't be perfect in it. But you'll be working to please him. Um, Is it Peter? Yes, it's Peter. He woke up every day with devotion to please the Lord. And I'm telling you. He went to extreme measures of cutting somebody's ear. So, you know, those are the type of people who work to please in the Lord because they have faith and they have hope that whatever the, they ask the Lord or whatever the Lord does, it will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So we should be like Peter. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you saw Jesus walking on water and you'd be like, ah, then I can also walk on water because my Lord said, let's go. And he nearly drowned, but that's good. <laughs> that shows the faith that you have that the Lord will do for you there's many of us who try to devotedly do things for God and we almost got ourselves in situations that we'd be like heaven what was I thinking so that's faith you must be like the people in the Bible you must fight and be as good and like you know you're not perfect 
that the best thing that we must say i try my best and i i am aiming to please the lord no matter what the situation might be and for that will be good enough for god god will measure it for us and say yeah today i'm pleased my child you have pleased me he will be the one to reward you accordingly okay so that's how faith is described in the bible through all the people in the bible if you can read the bible you could see all the people who had faith in god you know all all of them in the bible there were those who, who felt no i mean look at esther she fasted knowing that god will save he, her people regardless of the fact that she was married into a different marriage but she did pray and fast and she did believe that god will save her people um moses believed and nobody believed him john yo so many people in the bible and and through that they were rewarded accordingly so i'm not saying that be with god because you you think that yay i'm gonna get some great reward be there without any expectation just be there with god and don't expect anything because most of us tend to forget that god doesn't have to do anything for us he does it with his will and with his grace and you'd be like no let me go to church maybe something might happen i might pick up a 20 or not to just go to church just go as a matter of just i want to know you and he will show you who he is ah, it's gonna be difficult Shem. there's no road with god that's easy if you see something is it's not god mm -mm. no no that one is one thing that i do not agree with <laughs> let's go to the other questions what does it mean to have faith like a mustard seed what does it mean to have faith like a mustard seed having faith like a mustard seed refers to a concept shared by jesus in the book of matthew um chapter 17 verse 20 where jesus mentions that even if we have faith as a mustard seed we can move mountains this means the smallest amount of genuine sincere faith in god can lead to powerful trans transformative results now like the woman who said if i touch his love all will be right that woman who's just felt that if i just touch it will be right that is faith if you go to church and be like i don't have money but the money that i'm donating i believe that it will be enough and it will be just like the woman who, who there are people who pay millions and millions the boosting part and pay millions and millions and yet and yet they don't receive the the the, the, the thing you know so for me i for me or the for the way it is understood or the way it's been said or the way i'm saying it is that it's the little things that count you know the thing of it's the thought that counts yeah it's kind of those type of things you know he doesn't have money but he bought me a flower that counts she doesn't have the finest lots to offer the lord but god is pleased because that's all they had there's all people who have millions but they just donate just few coins there's a person who just had few coins and they gave all of it away so with you be like god i don't have nothing i just have me and my soul that is the greatest thing to please the lord because that's all he wants from you it's you 
because everything you have it's his even you are his he wants you to just return yourself back to him okay and uh, uh, furthermore it says it's a reminder that our faith doesn't have to be perfect or in minions to make a difference but rather it's an authenticity and the trust in god it truly matters so we need to understand that we are not perfect therefore whatever we do will not be perfect it's the things that you try to do to show that god i am trying to be in a way i'm trying to do it with i will not be perfect it's like a drug addict they want to stop being a drug addict so they stop certain habits they're struggling but they stop the fact that they are trying to stop the fact that they're fighting it it's the greatest thing that matters that i can see that you're trying and therefore god will send something or someone to help you strengthen what you're trying to do you understand and another one it says a beautiful interstitial of profound impact that even a tiny amount of genuine faith in our lives and around the world can make a difference. If you believe that every day you are preaching and talking the word of God or you're talking about God every day and trying to move your life away, it is eventually it's going to move certain people. I've realized in my own life, man. Yeah, I was regularly talking about God. All of a sudden, there's prayer groups everywhere. I'm like, ah. guys, was there such things before I came here? They'd be like, ah, there was one. It collapsed. But I was there just as many. No. I'm like, seriously? What's this God for saying? Speak my word and I will help you. I will help you and those around you to find him. And I was like, you used me as your vessel. And these people have accepted the vision. I was happy. You know, I was happy even though I couldn't attend most of them. But I was just happy that even though it is not through me, but it's with God. Those things used to exist, but not as good as it exists now. The fact that God used me to return them. I was happy. I was happy. Very happy. Because I was like, yeah, man, you want to pray times even better now. Because, wow. <laughs> wow. And I was like, how? That's the preaching of Jesus Christ. How? God shows that the devil has no power. Just allow him to use you. Then you will see that the devil has no power. It's next, like Cat Williams says, the devil cannot build, he cannot give um people blessings the way God gives blessings, and he cannot create and he can't take anything from you if God has given it to you. The devil cannot do that. So remember that the little that you have. And the, what you already have. Give it your all to God. And trust. And believe. And have faith. That all. That you have given to God. Will be in good hands. And now. You're going to be in good hands. You know when you. This, this thing's going to be like. If God told you to quit your job. You quit your job. You're like yeah. <laughs> there's so much little faith we have i feel like it's not even about the little faith i think it's about the fear we also have fear i think it should be something else i also discuss in the next video about fear because i feel like most of us have faith until fear comes in then now yeah, 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 yeah. things are now turning sideways you're now just scared or yo what will happen what will i eat who will i stay what will i if I just let it go because there's a voice in my head, there's there is a feeling in my heart that says 
let it go and I'll take care of you. And you're like, what if I'm gonna stay like this? I have nothing like this. I have nothing. I'm just so. That's when fear comes in. And it, it will overcome your fear. So let's go to the another question. How does faith intersect with the works according to the Bible? Okay. So in the Bible, the relationship between faith and works is a, a really, really deep conversation of importance. For example, um, I'll just give you an example. Apostle James highlights the connection between faith and works in his letter, emphasizing that genuine faith is evidenced by one's actions. He explains that we are justified by faith and true faith naturally results in good works. This means that our actions should reflect in our faith and our faith should inspire us to do good works and aligns with the teachings of Jesus who emphasizes the importance of living out our faith through love and service to others. Combination of faith and works is a powerful expression of our commitment to God and our fellow human beings. So for me, I genuinely want to explain it in my understanding is the type of thing of helping people and giving to people and doing good things you know loving each other respecting each other humbling yourself saying good things growing each other and literally just being a good person you know praying for others not just for yourself looking out for others and not just for yourself solving saving people protecting people those you know you don't know Helping those, those you don't even don't know. And guys, I know it's really difficult in the world that we're in. Where you see somebody walking down the road and you feel like you could give them a ride home. And then you start thinking about all oh, the people are being human trafficked, hijacked, or even killed by helping those people they meet down the road. And it's, it's really sad because there are people actually want to help those people. But the fear, you know? The fear of if I help this person and this person kills me. If I have, you know, you, you have that faith that God will protect me. But there's another thing you're like, I should not test God. Like, what if God is not saying give everybody a lift? Or you meet somebody and they're lost and they need a place to stay. And you're like, what if I let this person in the house come through? They're going to rob me. They're going to kill me in my own house. It, it, it's 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 really sad in the world that we're living in now and it's no different from the days of before jesus christ or during jesus christ those things did happen then and they're still happening even now but then again the most powerful thing is to always say god please guide me and protect me to every person that i see that i need to help help me see who i need to help and protect me in helping those i need to help you know, because there are people that you help and they keep on coming back and be like. So now I need to feed you all the time. You just maybe you should might have to look after them until they get back on their feet, which is OK, really much OK. But there are those people who trick people. When you see a person outside a mall, I haven't eaten, I haven't done stuff. You buy them food tomorrow, they're at a pub, they're drinking alcohol. When I do that, just let it go. When you help that person, if they deceived you and lied to you, that is with them and God. When you did what is good, and you have faith that God has seen what you have did and he will do right by you, for you have tried to make yourself better. So for me, I feel like that is the actions that we need to do, you know, to, to for the what we like the behaviors of ours. Like also in situations where you see that people are provoking you, 
think happy thoughts think of yourself in a in the beach eating something nice don't respond to negativity do not do that to yourself if you hear people talking about you leave or go or wear your headsets your ipods blast that music on your ears let it go don't even entertain people because people have a way of provoking you just for you to look bad just girl it's the good thing to do and the matured way to handle things just let it go that's also an action of good works do not fight and do not fight for god god will fight for himself all you need to say is that you know the most praised phrase that the christian says that god be with you that be, use that whenever you see somebody's problem god be with you or just look at them and god and say god do you see your child do you see your child i could i could beat them up i could show them but because i want to be right by you and I want to show through my behavior that I am for you. I believe that you will get into that child and show them that, hey, hey, man, what you're doing is wrong. Who are you to go around and making other people's lives miserable? For your entertainment. So you got to always believe that God is for you and they, he will correct his children. These people on this planet are not yours. They are God's children. So he knows how to correct them. So whenever a person provokes you, why not just be like side eye and then beautiful eyes to God and then side eye just to indicate to God of your child. <laughs> your child. <laughs> and walk away walk away drink your water and walk away have faith that the person will change and god will change them for you no and usually also by practicing the things in the bible you know it, i know it's difficult for everyone i also have a problem of eating too much and i know it's a sin to eat too much because you guys didn't know too much of everything is wrong. You drink too much, it's wrong. Exercise too much, it's wrong. Like, there's certain things that be like, how? That's wrong. They be like, yeah, it's wrong. So we all need to start changing our behaviors. They're not only for us, they're not only to please God, but also for us. You know, there's some things that we do, then we're not realizing that God is not most of the things that God is telling us to do is not only for him in fact it's not even for him it's for you you get it so remember to practice the ten commandments the old testament will forever be relevant there's no such thing that the old testament doesn't work the old testament works and will forever works practice your ten commandments Always remember the Ten Commandments at Ecclesiastes 20, chapter 20. In fact, let me read it for you guys. Because I feel like most people read it out for you before we go to the other questions. Let me read the Ten Commandments for you before we go into others. Ecclesiastes 20, the Ten Commandments. The first one. God spoke and this were his words. I am your Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves do worship no god but me do not make yourselves images or anything in heaven or on earth or in water under the earth do not bow down to any idol or worship it because i am the lord your god and i tolerate no rivals i bring punishment on those who hate me and though and their descendants down to the third and to the fourth generations. But I show my love to thousands of generations of those who love me and obey my laws. Do not use my name for evil purposes, for I, the Lord your God, will punish anyone who misuses my name. Observe the Shabbat and keep it holy. 
You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is the day of rest dedicated to me. On that day, no one is to work, either you, neither you or your children, your slaves, your animals, nor foreigners who live in your country. In six days, I, the Lord, made the earth, the sky, the sea, and everything in them. On the seventh day, I rested. That is why I, the Lord, the Lord, blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. Respect your mother, respect your father and your mother, so that you may live long time in the land that I'm giving you. Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not accuse anyone falsely. Do not desire any man's house. Do not desire his wives, his slaves, his cattle, his donkeys, or anything else that he owns. Um, commandments that are the ten. In the Bible, Ecclesiastes, it's in Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, from 1 to verse 17. Those are the things that you need to do. Those are basically like the main, main basic things that you should not be doing. You can read it for yourself. It's actually, I feel like Ecclesiastes is detailed out throughout the Bible if you think about it. If you really think about it, it's actually breaking down the whole Bible. So let's see the other one the other of about faith. How can we strengthen our faith through prayer and worship? This is how you can try to strengthen your faith through prayer and worship. Strengthening your faith through prayer and worship is a noble pursuit. In the Bible, the book of Romans mentions or teaches us that faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is through the word about Christ reading the bible going to church going to places where people speak about the lord almighty um places where you 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 hear people talking about the lord almighty and even talking about the experiences that they have been with within god you know and that's how you learn about christ because you open the bible and you can imply what you have been through with God and what other people have said about God and have your own understanding through praying to God to give you that understanding. Therefore, spending time in prayer and worship allows us to connect with God, align our hearts with His will and grow in our understanding of His love and faithfulness. See? That's, I always heard people saying, um God doesn't care about what you wear, he cares about your heart. Have you ever heard of this phrase that says if you look good you feel good and you way bad you feel bad? The way you dress also affects the way you're going to behave. I mean you can definitely not feel completely crazy and dressed and fully covered clothes because you want to take them off so you can com be completely free you know i feel like certain dress codes influence your behaviors if you're wearing a military uniform you know you need to wear and behave like this if you're wearing a certain dress code like maybe the way i'm wearing you wouldn't feel comfortable going to the club like this you want to wear something short revealing and all of that so I feel that certain things activate your heart, you know? When you know that this is how I feel about this and you would wear one of it, you would wanna wait according to that, you know, and your heart will be pleased with what you're doing. You know, so I feel like most people it, it works in one and two ways. There are people who we modest and say whatever they say but they don't do what they are dressed according to 
and yeah that's a bad thing true but honestly speaking any person can be heartless and anybody can be bitter whether you're religious or not but it's what your heart is filled with you know there are things where most people we are not aware that you're doing because of anger apologies um of anger i feel like most people we, we tend to not understand that our emotions do get the best of us and therefore if you try to change it it's a good thing you know you have anger issues traumatic childhood issues you deal with it you fix it right but you reminding a person about the past mistakes you're making them do a sin which the bible says making your brothers do a sin is a sin so i understand that guys our hearts tend to divert especially if you're with the wrong people and they influence you badly you end up saying or oh, not doing the right things it's why they say that gossiping is wrong i understand where the concept that comes from because when you're gossiping you build a certain thing in your heart you don't need to always have information that is not even needed because why the people you're sitting with are encouraging you to talk about other people and then when you're talking about other people you tend to focus about their lives and when you focus about their lives your heart is looking at that and you'll be like why is this person succeeding on the same salary level but this person is not succeeding we i go to church every day but this person gets a car and they get married uh i went to school with this person and now they are better than me then you have no good see what's going on your heart is now deriving from god it's now entertaining the devil yeah when that's when you become heartless but now you you have a your heart is not nice you're heartless because you're not following the ten commandments the ten commandments as we said do not desire your neighbor's house or do not desire his wife his lace his cattle his pet his donkeys or anything that he owns that's the last Ten commandments and that affects how if you think about it comparing yourself to another person makes you bitter in in the african in a, in a sort of language in africa we say waloya it's witchcraft because end of the day when you start comparing yourself with other people you're going to grow a bitter heart and when you grow a bitter heart you end up doing bitter things and your heart will disalign itself from what god desires it would it would definitely disconnect from what you and your god desires okay so let's go to the other questions so we're now going to the other questions about faith what role does faith play in miracles described in the bible it as it is and i'm just gonna read faith plays a significant role in the bible such as in the new testament jesus often emphasized the importance of faith in miraculous events that took place he would attribute the healing at all the miracle to individuals faith for example in the gospel of matthew jesus tells a woman who had been subjected to bleeding take heart daughter your faith has healed you this demonstrates that faith is not just a passive belief but an active trust and resilience to god's power to bring about the miracles <laughs> and it's it is through faith that individuals open themselves to receive God's transformative work in their lives. Faith, therefore, serves as a catalyst for miraculous, miraculous events that are recorded in the Bible. So, like before, 
more more things will happen if you believe that they will happen and you believe that god will do it for you if you don't believe then what's the whole purpose of it what is the whole reason for it you're just doing it because you're doing it or do you believe that god will help you you're just lacking or you just need a push so i honestly speaking faith goes with everything in your life whatever happens comes with faith and hope that it will succeed it will happen all that will happen you just need to believe that god is the one who's going to do it for you and you know that it will happen and god will allow that to happen right miracles open doors so that's one thing i do believe that faith does play in miracles and and it plays in your life in general so this is a long one this is the other question how does faith relate to hope and love in christian life here we go faith hope love are often referred as to the three theological virtues in a christian theology in corinthians 1 chapter 13 verse 13 the apostle paul writes and now this remain faith hope and love but the greatest of this is love but the great uh, yeah, the greatest is love this verse highlights the incorrectness the card intercon yo. so you're gonna read the other one it says how does faith relate to hope and love in christian life faith hope and love are often referred to as three theological virtues in christian theology in Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1 chapter 13 verse 13 the apostle writes and now this three remain faith hope and love the greatest of this is love the most important thing for us as humans and Christians is to love one another when you love each other you can do everything you can do greatness when you love each other love each other that is the greatest thing that you can fulfill to the lord and mighty love each other and it it has a interconnectedness interconnectedness okay, of these virtues in the christian's life let's start faith faith is the foundation of our relationship with god it is through faith that we believe in God's promises and trust in his faithfulness. Hope is a confident expectation of what God has promised. It, ha it is an assurance that he will fulfill his promises. Even when the circumstances seem to break our faith, as the greatest of this virtue, he is working out of faith and hope and it is a selfishness and sacrificial of love. That reflects God's love for us and compassionate love for God and others. So if you think about it, the whole Bible is also based on it. Love, faith, and hope. If you love each other, you can do anything. That's the faith you have. And we know that with all that greatness will come. That is hope. Therefore, together, faith, hope, and love form the bedrock of Christian life. Shaping our beliefs, sustaining us in challenging times, and guiding our actions towards others. They are interlinked, each dependent on the other. And together they provide a framework on how Christians are called to live and relate to God and one another. I don't think I need to explain that. That is straight to the point. 
straight to the point of what we need to do and live for each other and build the for each other straight to the point let's go to the other question what are the trials of faith mentioned in the scripture the first one i think the story of abraham which i usually liked um emphasizing is his son isaac this was one big test that i won't lie to you he's it said abraham's faith as it is required him to trust in god's plan even into face the great personal sacrifice is and like i mean for so many years he was praying for a child and god blesses him with the son and then the next time god be like go and do an offering for me with your child and he actually did that it shows the faith that he had in god that's the trials that comes with faith that's why i said if god were to take everything from you will you still pray to god i know there are uh, um there was a joke of a guy where he went to church and then when he got there he find um a priest say jesus christ died for all of us and how many of us would die for Jesus Christ? And everyone said, hallelujah, amen. And then the pastor said, I have a gun. <laughs> Let's show how much we love God. Let's kill each other. For Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, if that was the whole, what if it, it was actually the whole reason I needed that God wanted us to sacrifice ourselves to him. Let's say that was actually evident. How oh, many? So it's one of those trials that comes with faith. Né? And I feel like most of us would do it unexpectedly just on the spot. And there are those who are going to be like, hey man, is this not a cult? Is this not a cult? Are we not being uh, tested or something? And I feel like most of us will actually think of that. So that's the, 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 the trial that comes with faith. And another one is job. The one I'm saying, if God will say everything, will we stay in there? The loss, but yet remaining faithful to God. Those are the most challenging things that could happen to you guys. Even Jesus himself. Having to sacrifice his whole life for everyone. That is faith and trust in God. That's, and guys, we, we, we fail to do to, to know that guys like is that faith doesn't come smoothly it comes with trials it comes with tests comes with tests comes with tests that most of us we are not aware of and we are not taking them as seriously as we thought we should that is one of the issues that we have but i'm telling you through say, faith, faith serves to demonstrate the strength and the endurance that faith can provide, even the most challenging circumstances. I'm telling you, with faith, we can get through anything. Let's go to the next question. The next what is the is, armor of God and how is faith a part of it in the book of Ephesians Apostle Paul talks about the armor of God as a metaphor for a special pr- protection that God provides for his followers faith is an actual part of his armor described as a shield that helps believers to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one Faith enables us to trust God in his promises and to stand in firm in the face of trials and to resist the attacks of the enemy. It is assurance that of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen, as mentioned in the Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse 1. Just as the shoulder revealed the shoulder soldier soldier reviews on 
refers to the shield for protection as to does the believer rely on faith as a shield against spiritual oppression so that was the last question and i feel like we all have we all understand that with faith you can survive anything you can survive anything that comes your way all in that guys thank you for subscribing to my youtube channel and coming to way end to the channel please don't forget to like subscribe and comment to this video and i hope that you really enjoyed and you learned a few things from a different perspective from a different personal views and understanding and i would really appreciate that you also provide your views and understanding on certain things that were said in this video about faith and how you can restore it or how you can learn to have it if you have experience and you have anything that you feel that it is needed or that i think i've left out or i've not, not said in a way that you think that another person would understand by all means you are free to comment down below and say and comment on everything and rectify whatever you think i was wrong on or even support what i've said for me that's all and i hope you have a blessed day <music>